Hi and welcome to another episode of Toby's Barbecue Corner. Today we're making dried and cold smoked spicy sausage. Now what you need for it and how to do it, I'm gonna show you in this episode. And this is what we need for today. Now you need one pork neck, one pork belly. You will need your favorite sausage seasoning and because this is saltless, you need some nitrite curing salt because we will be curing the sausages later on as well. Uh, so you don't need any additional salt. And now comes the tongue twister. You need some sheep sausage casings. Now for the ones of you who have seen me make sausages on this channel before, you know that it can be quite tedious uh, to put the casings onto the tube of uh, the sausage maker. Now with this company, what I found is they deliver them to you and they're already put on some kind of plastic. So in essence, what you need to do is you need to water them for at least half an hour in like lukewarm water. And then um, they should slide right on to the tube that you then use to actually fill the casing. And I think that's uh, rather nice. So I'm gonna water them now. Um, they will have a lot more than the half an hour because obviously we need to take care of the meat, but it won't hurt the casing. Now with the meat, because it's very important to get the exact measurement for the nitrite uh, curing salt as well as our sausage seasoning, it's important to remove the skin um, off the pork belly because obviously we don't want that. Um, so we're gonna do that first and then we're going to measure both pieces of meat again to get the exact measurement uh, because you do need 22 grams of um, the nitrite curing salt and you need 25 grams of the sausage seasoning per kg that we have. So obviously we want to make that as accurate as possible. Um, this pork belly is actually a Duroc pork belly. I opted for a slightly uh, more quality pork belly than, um, you know, because I, I found it and I thought, well, let's, let's go for the quality one. <laughs> um, and now let's try to take it off as best as we can without losing too much of the fat or any other, um, you know, of the meat that's on there. Now, obviously, also do make sure that you have no other cartilage, no bone, no nothing that is still stuck on here as well as on our pork neck. So I'm gonna finish this off and uh, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do next. And just like magic, we're done. <laughs> so now you can obviously Keep this, make uh, crackling out of it, dry it, uh, you know, kind of like make chips out of it. I haven't decided yet what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna leave it to the side. And now we're gonna cut this up. Now, I like to go a bit thinner on it, uh, simply because it's easier for the machine afterwards. So I'll go for like a centimeter by a centimeter, uh, kind of like chunks. And then we're going to uh, mince the meat, and we're going to start off with kind of like the medium, if you have three discs, I have three discs, I'm gonna go start with the medium, which is about four millimeters, and I'm gonna go to the finer one. Not entirely sure what the diameter of those holes is then, but um, I find it mixes better with, um, you know, the pork neck. Um, also, it makes a finer consistency for the meat later on, and obviously, all these uh, lovely flavors from the sausage uh, seasoning as well as the salt then have a better chance to actually get into the meat. So as I showed you, you make these little slaps and then you just cut them nice and fine. Um, as I said, it's just a little easier on the machine. And I'm gonna show you how to do that with the pork neck in a second. Now with the pork neck, exactly the same thing. You obviously want to check that there's no additional cartilage or any kind of bone or anything like that stuck there. And then what I like to do is, I just like to cut it in strips. It's just a little easier than afterwards to cut, but look at the marbling, look at the intramuscular fat. That's gonna be really nice later on in our sausage. So you don't need any additional fat, <laughs> definitely not. Um, but I'm sure that's gonna cure very nicely. And obviously that's also 
the quality you're looking for when you're making your pork butt, you know, your pulled pork. Obviously, the more intramuscular fat, the juicier this will be. All right. So, again, make uniform little chunks out of it. And then we're going to measure the seasoning that we need. Right, on to our seasoning and salt mix. Now I measured the meat after I cut it up because remember we mustn't measure uh, the skin because it would, uh, yeah, make the math incorrect. So we have 3.85 kgs of meat. That means we need for the sausage seasoning exactly 90 grams. So let's put that in here. Seventy grams, eighty-seven. Come a little bit more. Ninety grams, exact. Fantastic. And we need seventy-nine grams of salt. So let's level that again, and let's do seventy-nine grams of salt. Exactly 79. It's really important that you measure accurately guys because obviously you don't want to over salt or over season But obviously you need the right amount of uh, the nitrate curing salt so that it cures later on Now I've given the seasoning and the salt a little bit of a stir so we have a good mixture all around And what we're going to do now is we're now going to spread it evenly across the meat and whilst weighing I've already mixed it up a little bit but we're going to make sure that we get a good seasoning to meat ratio all around. And then guys, because temperature is really important, this goes straight back in the fridge. Um, again, it makes it easier for the machine later on to work its way through the meat if it's a little colder, as well as obviously you're working with raw meat and because we are just going to air dry and um, then cold smoke it. This is in all essence actually a yeah raw sausage, so to speak. Um, so you would want to really make sure that yeah cleanliness, hygiene is really 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 important. That's why especially when you um, you know look at temperature and whatnot, you you don't want it to get too warm. Obviously, if you can do this outside at a reasonable temperature, even better. I mean, it's like five to ten degrees. But uh, today is really, really cold, so I opted not to go outside. <laughs> but yeah, obviously wear glove when you mix meat, etc. And as I said, now this goes back in the fridge until we've done the setup with um, our mincer. Now the meat was in the fridge for about an hour, hour and a half, so nice and cold now. It had time to absorb some of the seasonings. So we're now going to stuff it in the grinder and mince it and now what we're going to do is we're going to create a little bit of space here obviously for the meat to fall down and because it's going to get rather loud I'm doing <laughs> all the talking now um, and as I said we're going to be mincing it twice so once with a larger size and then once with this which is the um, yeah, smallest size and diameter that I have.
Right, we're ready to stuff. So what we need is obviously my sausage maker. So what you want to do is, you want to make sure that uh, the piston is all the way up. And then the nice thing that you can do is you can remove this entire piece here on the side and take it out in order to stuff it. Now very important, when you stuff it, you want to make sure that you have very little, if possible, actually no air trapped inside here. So really make sure that you push it nice and deep inside there. Make sure that everything is very compacted. And uh, this holds about 5 kgs or 5 liters. So obviously all of this meat should fit in there if you press it down. Now I'm going to stuff this and I'm going to show you how to put on the casing. Right, all done. So we're going to put it back inside and actually this sausage maker has two different gears so to speak. So one large one, one smaller one. So we're going to be using the smaller one and just put it in like this. And now we're going to take care of the sausage casing. Now they've been soaking for obviously a lot longer than half an hour. So um, according to the manual, <laughs> you're supposed to remove those red little, uh, yeah, those rubber bands and then basically stick it on, wet this a little bit, stick this on and then the casing should technically come off almost by itself. This is posing to be a bit difficult to be honest with you. So we'll give it a shot to do it like that. Wow, super nice, easy, easy to do. And we're just now going to move it across onto this and let me tell you guys, liquid is your best friend. So water, you know, just the water that you use to rehydrate the casing will be used now to push this all the way onto this rod and then we're going to be um, pushing the meat down and then we're going to fill our sausages. So I'm going to finish this off and I'll show you what to do next. All right, all done. And what I've already done is I've already pushed the meat all the way to the front to make sure that we have as little to no air as possible. And actually I'm going to ask my wife now to help me with, um, you know, pushing the meat through the, the sausage maker simply because it's easier to do this when you have two hands free to just take care of the sausage lining. Now what you need to do though is with as little air as I said as possible we're going to tie this up and then we're going to be making our sausages. So all done and now without much further ado All right, what you hear sizzling potentially in the background is uh, some of the meat that was left over in our sausage maker, but don't they look lovely? Now I have to admit though that um, sheep um, intestines or sheep uh, casing is a lot harder to work with than uh, pork or pig, uh, simply because it's a lot finer. But what we're gonna do now is we're now going to create um, yeah, those individual little sausages. So all you need to do is you press down, you twist it. The important part here though is you don't separate it simply because when you want to actually hang it, you need them obviously together. Mm -hmm. 
And there we go. All right, all the individual sausages are created. So they're going to go into my basement now for two to four days. It depends a bit on the ambient temperature to air dry. Um, obviously we're gonna check it daily and the nitrite uh, curing salt should turn them a little bit reddish as well. 48 hours later, that's what they look like and they got quite stiff. So I'm quite happy about it. We're now going to prep my cold smoke generator. Now we're going to be smoking with birch. So what I like to use is one of those little measuring cups. It's fairly simple. And then I have my cold smoke generator and uh, it is the same that I use to um, do my salmon. So all you need to do is basically just pour it in and it should last for eight hours for the first smoking session and all you need to do is basically you just push down a little bit compact it a little bit and then we're going to use a candle to light it but how to do that I'm going to show you outside on my Kamado. There you go guys they're hanging nicely in there the cold smoke generator is going to do its job for the next eight hours then we're going to wait 24 hours and we're going to smoke them again. One week later all done and I think they really do look the part um, yeah so, I think what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna take one, move the others in the box, and then, you know, give it a cut and see. They're nice and dry. However, they're still kind of juicy on the inside, so they're not bone dry. Mmm. But they taste like they were made by a butcher. So, yeah, I'm really happy. Turned out really well. Mmm, delicious. So, I'm gonna package that up now and I'm gonna see you in a minute. All right guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video about the dried and cold smoked spicy sausage. Now, it is super delicious. I'm not entirely sure about the smoke. Um, I don't think it really stuck to the meat all that well. Um, so I'm sure you can actually do without. But if you do have the chance and you have a, um, a sausage maker machine, you know, and you can mince your own meat, by all means go for it, especially during the winter time. This really works well. And I have to admit, you know, with the um, um, the curing salt, etc., it does have the same feel, texture and taste as if you buy it from a butcher. So I really enjoyed this experience. Now, if you did enjoy the video, I would appreciate a comment and a thumbs up. Please head over to that subscribe button for more great videos to come. And I hope to see you soon again at Toby's Barbecue Corner.